Hello, Dan here from Sure PT. Just wanted to give you a quick little picture of how high this pile is. I'm wondering about that because that brush is soft on the outside and the inside is not. Uncle Steve is correct. I was scared beyond belief. Unbelievable. Look how it's pulling up that little tree over there on the side. But I was able to pop right out of it and play around a little bit. Burn your brush pile? Oh yeah, mine's burnt. I, I took care of all of mine. You didn't hurt yourself falling out of it. Huh? You didn't hurt yourself falling out of it. No. It ain't easy to get in and out of it. Oh. It's even worse in the back. Yeah. <laughs> it was close. He got a tractor here with a loader tip you back up. <laughs> I, can get this here. I absolutely love the shirt especially on small little areas just like this little brush pile I always have a blast I certainly do not want to tip over but I do like testing the limits I probably could have kept going on that first time and maybe popped over the top of it but it just honestly was not worth it that is a lot taller than it looks like on the video that's one unfortunate thing is you don't get to see what it really looks like in person. Here you go. Take a look at that right tire, the passenger side tire off the ground. That's cool. Yep, here's some dent marks on the shirt from past experiences. Just pop it into a small little chunk of water here. It is deep enough where the shirt can actually float. As you're going to see, I'm going as slow as I am right now because I do have that front window open. But what's cool here is you're going along and you can start to notice when the shirt's floating. Right now it is floating. But when you go and you grab those trees, it's, it's slick because you can go and you can really get moving very quickly. You don't have to wait for the shirt to get moving like when you are just open water and the paddles are the only thing that is drifting something. They're pretty close for water coming up over the top there in the front. Um, what I'm doing here now is I'm going to be transferring. I put another camera on the front and I'm going into that same stretch of water that we were just in. But this is the part that I really don't like to talk about. Um, again, very simple. A small little chunk of water. Go into it. Oh, there I go in underwater there and I'm driving over. And uh, kind of see a tree that's in the water here right there. And I just drive over that tree and then I try to kind of turn around and like I've said in many of my videos when you cross obstacles you need to be perpendicular because if you are not perpendicular and that log right there gets in the middle of the sherp essentially the tires are just going to sit there and float so this is the same place as where we were at going into the water drive over to that same spot and you can kind of see that tree I'll try to tell you when I'm going to get to it here right about now I'm crossing it it's that tree right there and then I spin around again and again if you are not perpendicular to an obstacle that can create issues because if that obstacle is in the middle of shirt essentially the shirt is sitting on that and you can't get enough grip in the water with just the paddles of the tires in order to move 
So I start moving up and I back up here just a little bit and I thought everything was fine. Uh, but now I start to kind of get hung up on this tree because of some of those limbs that are on it. Try to go forward, not having a heck of a lot of luck with that. But as I've learned, I guess over this almost a year of me having this Sherp, sometimes what you can do, and you can see Robbie there in the back, is he's trying to bounce up and down and kind of get loose off of that log so you can get off, um, but he's not successful. So I just opened the front there too, and now we're trying to rock it back and forth. Uh, he's in the back, I'm in the front. We're trying to kind of synchronize our motions to get the Sherp uh, moving back and forth. Uh, we really were not successful in being able to do that. The next little trick that I've kind of learned is, especially if you have two people or if you're by yourself, is you just put it in gear, whether it be reverse or first gear, let it move very slowly, and then get all the weight in the very back of the Sherp, which changes the buoyancy. You can kind of see the Sherp moving a little bit there as we're rolling back and forth. It's starting to move. Maybe if we would have sat there another 10, 15 minutes doing that, it might have moved. But by golly, I just got frustrated and I thought that the easiest thing for us to do um, is actually just to end up sawing off that limb, which you are going to be seeing in just a little bit. But you can see us still just trying to wiggle this thing back and forth and back and forth. Just didn't work, folks. It just didn't work. So, eventually, with Robbie being in the Army and all, I thought he would be much better at shimming out in that log right there and going over to shore and cutting it off. So here that piece is. These are embarrassing times. Believe it or not, we actually got the shirt pung up. Yeah, I've had this shirt. You missed the 20 minutes of footage of us rocking back and forth like a bunch of numbskulls. <laughs> We did the, all the tricks. We went in the back, we left it in reverse, we put it in forward, went in the back, we shook it back and forth. Pretty much, we're just dumbasses. We're in a little spot we that's got not, even, <laughs> not even... Hey, not even a quarter of an we acre. we were under fire, <laughs> we would be dead. Not even a quarter acre. We'd be a statistic. And we are stuck. We're a statistic. We're the, look, we got a search crew, listen. I hear ATVs, I hear movement. I don't think they're going to... Hopefully gonna, they're friendly. I don't think they're going to hear that over the camera. Oh, so, hear an ATV in the background? there was a little bit of a debate about how we were going to get out of here. I have a couple of silky saws, All right, which awesome. is the greatest thing in the world. Here we go, we got two silky saws. We got the silky... I need a camera. Huzza, huzza. We're going to give them the huzza, huzza one. Can I collaborate? There's one, and then we got the Silky Humahama. We'll throw that one to him. So he can use whatever he wants. We we'll see what happens. Stuck, and I just climbed across this. Like yeah. Yep, I did make it away from that. Uh, very embarrassing, a very silly thing that I did. I guess a lesson learned, again, making sure that I'm perpendicular. It is what it is. I thought I'd show you some of my failures in addition to some of my successes. So I just kind of cruise around this little spot here for a little while. Not really exciting. I strongly suggest you wait till the end because there's some small little angles that uh, I hit going coming out of the water and kind of going back in you'll see that at the end it's kind of nifty it's really actually a very maneuverable machine just having those that one side of the wheels driving and you can spin around fairly quickly it's nice too that when you're on a little pond like this you don't have to deal with all the current all the different rivers that I've been at, that throws another whole wrench into the whole system about how to operate the Sherp. It's a hell of a lot easier to be able to just drive it in fairly stagnant water like this.
There's that one tree that we just knocked over. You notice that baby floating, and now we can just drive over it, no problem whatsoever. And you can see here, I'm not floating. I'm just touching on the bottom, so you get a little bit of grip, and you can use some of that torque with the shirt. When you're driving this in like open water, I've found that the best gear to be in is about third. Uh, seems to work very well. You don't have to have a punch like second. You go any higher gear than third. It doesn't really have enough power to keep going that way. And additionally, it really doesn't do a damn thing anyhow because the wheels start to spin very quickly. You know, you start to get air underneath the surface and you're really not, it, it's not doing anything other than putting a lot of air into the water. You know, that's one of the main benefits for a shirt is making sure that the fish can swim and have a lot of fun because they have nice oxygenated water as a result of the shirt driving them. But as you're kind of noticing here, you know, I've driven through this, I don't know, I've spent, what, five, ten minutes going through? And all of those trees that I'm going over, that's the part that's just so incredible. Typically, they just pop right back up again. Now, if it's rotten trees or something similar to that, yeah, they break off. But if they're still green, they're not breaking. They're going to flex and they're going to pop basically back into that same spot that they were in when I initially um, drove over them. I was thinking about actually driving out of this area, but there has been so much damage and so many trees down from the tornadoes that went through here. I just changed my mind, honestly, and said, oh, forget it, we'll do that another day. The exciting part that I was talking about is coming up. Uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, I really need subscribers. Please subscribe to my channel. Greatly appreciate it. Enjoy the fun, and we'll see you next time.